Oh. Okay. Hi guys. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm doing a past life reading. Stop it. I'm doing a past life reading because it seems like even for my readings, every single time it comes out to be a relationship or whatever. Even if you don't try to, it still somehow does. But um so I wanted to do a past life reading because every single one that I do, it always says that you're dealing with a past life person that you've already done, that you've already dealt with. So we're going to look into it. Um, there's a bunch of different things that either come into the whole mix or are different lifetimes, but either way, you're still having a different lifetime with the same person. And I kind of have them in three different, well, actually four. That one could go with anything, though. Four different, and that's the middle. Four different kinds of, um, <laughs> four different kinds of, maybe, four different kinds of, like, sections of what would make sense. Um, so the things that like came out with like you know like the romance angels one is let's see the things are like that are affecting that are affecting it are like children codependency um not opening up and having heart to heart conversations <laughs> go <laughs> um religious factors huge religious factors um finances and careers letting go of control issues, trust, loving yourself first, um, unrequited love, which there's two of those, um, forgiving and learning, and release your ex. Uh, then we also, stop it! Then we also have, like, stop, <laughs> my bunny. Then we also have, at least she's not eating carpet. Um, then we have, like, how some of them kind of came about and then separated and... Yeah, so, and of course, stop it, the thing is, like, the whole out overall is, um, your commitment is being tested. Ow! <laughs> Freya, go, go. And I've already done this, like, three times, so I'm not doing it again. I did, you have no idea what I did, like, I had all these added to it and then I was like no because I had it perfectly on the couch and then I move it down here and every time I was like adding something that I was shuffling and I got I was like okay here we go and then nope so this is what we're dealing with so this has to do with obviously unrequited love and a love life this could be it could be, um, doesn't have to be an actual romantic relationship. It can actually be a family member or a friend, you know what I mean? Like a karmic partner or a karmic lesson can be whatever kind of relationship. It doesn't have to be a loved one. So what we have is with the unrequited love, well, the love life, whatever. We have female and male. So how that can, and we have health, okay? Um, and the reason why those two go together is um, because you could have been a male for most of your lifetimes and now in this one you're a female or vice versa. So what happens is, you know, you actually aren't feeling completely right in your own skin. Um, you could have more obviously masculine in you if you're a female and more female emotional hey female emotional traits if you're a male so it's like it can con it can contradict each other um to where it actually does do your health because you're confused emotional imbalance um what was the other one yeah, because you're confused. You're not used to being the other kind of sex. You're not used to being the other kind of sex. So we can cause health problems. Oh my god. I'm going to hurt her. I'm just kidding. Um, it can cause health problems and also, you know, um, confusion of the sex. Hold on. 
Right? Okay. Okay. So, anyways, um, it can also cause problems in that area because um, you can fight. You know, if you have more male in you and you're a female, and you have an alpha kind of male that you're dating or a woman, whatever, cause a problem. So um, that's how we're gonna do that. So it's like whoever is having that unrequited love, and it could be both. Um, you have had uh, a lifetime in Atlantis during that time. So pretty much like it sucks because it's like you guys both know like you have that attraction, the chemistry, the passion, but it has led to a lot of separation because you're both trying to look for that utopia kind of feeling that you both had in the Atlantis. Plus again, <laughs> you have the confusion and you could help the health because that's not being presented to you. Also, it could be affecting some kind of transportation uh, or you could have had some kind of transportation like a plane, a car, a train kind of um, uh, trauma related thing if you got in an accident or you got ran over by one or you know whatever but that also comes in with Atlantis because Atlantis was built off of solar and crystals and that's how they got around you know what I mean so like even if you have a problem with like like those kind of um, transportation traits that can be a problem as well um, with this kind of transportation it also talks about how um, what's it called? You have, you might have a lot of knowledge about, um, stuff like that. Like, how to bring into the world to help the world with engineering stuff, you know, whatever. Um, in this situation, okay. Okay. <laughs> you do have your angels, right? You, you have worked with your angels or were an angel in another life or came down to earth um, in order to do like light working or star seed or that kind of thing. Um, there was a promise made in this relationship, um, that caused a lot of problems because see, there's a lot of different things. Okay. Okay. One of the things can be that one or the other or both in different lifetimes, um, like to travel and leave a lot. So that could mean that they liked to move a lot as in like not just traveling around and everything or being like some kind of nomad. They like to like always move like where they lived and stuff like that. In this situation, because it is unrequited love, it can also mean that they left a lot to go and travel on jobs. Um, they could have left to go on a job and traveled and promised something um of the sort maybe even to have you know get married and have children and what happened was they could have either been in a war okay went to jail <laughs> see there's so many different things or they're all true you know what i mean like you're gonna feel it better than me obviously um or you got up and left and just abandoned the other person, okay? That has something to do with it, too. So that brings a lot of phobias. So there's a lot of fear-based um, situations, obviously, in these lifetimes. Because we still, no matter what, have unrequited love. Um, and I also had unrequited love from that. Release your ex. And forgiveness and learning, Okay. So, those prove that there's some kind of thing. When it says release your ex, take that as it resonates, because it could be anything. It could be, like, you still have feelings for your ex. It could be, um, you know, your ex is giving you the unrequited love. Um, or it's hurting the person that 
you're so it, it could be like a karmic thing like you're not releasing your ex and that karma lesson is already got like already learned so like there's the forgiveness and learning right um so that's that but yeah there's a lot of phobias um you know there's some of, of some claustrophobic ones when you come into imprisonment and um slavery also when you come into the imprisonment and slavery the wars and battles come together because you could feel very unjustified um in you know anything and it can cause a lot of codependency addictions um with the with other ones too which i'll go over um so there could be something where there's an unrequited love because there was a promise about getting married and having children and somebody got up and left um that could be one um or or they would just break up and get back together um which we have separation a lot and again that could be because of unrequited love releasing the ex but it's there was always that trying to find that utopia um and this also could not have to do i think it has something to do with one of them the male and female so there definitely could have been a health problem here which also um could have something to do with the wars and battles and the imprisonment um honestly I think that the leaving and traveling had to do with a lifetime in Egypt. Um, also, a lot of trauma happened in Egypt during those times. So, I think that has a lot to do with a lot of different scenarios depending on what you went through when you were in Egypt um, in general for yourself. Also, because there's a lot of phobias, there's a lot of control issues and trust issues. Okay, When it comes to all of these pretty much it's telling you you know ask for that release ask for that help from the the angels um the reason why see this came up twice and i kind of didn't really understand i mean creation obviously you know these things were created you're supposed to have creation with like your children and stuff like that like obviously all these things were created in different lifetimes but a lot of the times when it talked about angels in other lifetimes like in other like um cards like that it said to ask your angels before um going to sleep to or your higher self to help you during your dreams and this is true i do it um and then when you wake up you like kind of remember certain things and then uh, dreams are not dreams okay i could tell you dreams that i've had that are actually related to my life that have nothing to do with what my dream dream even was um, a lot of people think if their partner is cheating on them, it actually means that you judge yourself for something else and you feel like you stab yourself in the back or something like that. It's something that you have within yourself that you have an insecurity about or judging yourself for. It has nothing to do with that person. Just letting you know. Because <laughs> I've had to tell people that, like, they'll be, like, pissed. And I'm like, dude, like, no. Okay, so, so we also have a shitload of spiritual, of religion stuff okay so we have religion factors well obviously we have one two three four five five ish kind of let me add the angels i think the promise though is for everything i think there was a promise between every single lifetime and i don't know if it's been completed and that's what keeps bringing you guys back because that promise has not been made like it hasn't been completed you know it's like empty promises still whoever did the promise both of you did the promise like one or the other because in one lifetime whoever was trying to whoever was supposed to make the promise the other person could have fucked up where it went over to them and then they had to make the promise back to the other person and vice versa karmic lessons throughout throughout the whole things whatever so okay ready <laughs> we have biblical we have monk or nun vows again a promise um spirituality and religion now i'm just gonna do those real quick before I do the other ones okay if you were a monk or a nun you took a vow right you took a vow to devote yourself 
to either, you know, silence or poverty or something like that. So if you have financial problems with financial problems, it's actually here. Um, that could have something to do with it. It also could have to do with communal living because when you're in a community that is about poverty or, you know, you're living a poverty kind of way, you kind of all in that community have a job that you do and that's like what you do in that community but like you also have to like share your finances so and now it was probably hard to like if you have your own business it could be hard to charge for your services because you're used to like sharing in um give and take with your money so it's hard to charge somebody if you were sharing with everybody to help everybody live. You know what I mean? So finances have something to do with this um, situation. If you do have um, fluctuating finances, it could have something to do with that. It also could have something to do with the monk or nun and the vows because you could have taken a vow of poverty. Another thing with the monk or the, now, a monk or the nun is if you were in solitude, ready? If you were in solitude, um... If you were in solitude, as in not talking, you took a vow of not talking, it could be really hard to speak your truth now or talk at all or stand up for yourself or anything kind of like that. Um, that could also have to do with the imprisonment or slavery because if you had authority figures that pretty much said this is what you're gonna, like now, imagine going to court or going to whatever and they're like, okay, jail time, you have no fun, unless you're able to escape right then and there, <laughs> you have no other choice you know what I mean so it's like the imprisonment and the slavery and then you have the self-entrapment in your head that puts you in the solitude and also if you're a monk or a nun you're used to being in solitude so the heart-to-heart -heart conversations that should be done with the unrequited love there's no heart-to-heart -heart conversation because the solitude of that lifetime is not coming about then we have communion which is also again opening up about mental things of like kind and spiritual like having a conversation about it like not like having it like opening up to each other and having that heart to heart conversation to explain you know whatever is going on but in this lifetime but if you resonate with any of this stuff or it triggers you or it can relate to what is going on right now that's why okay so you have to pretty much, like, ask your angels to release your vows. Um, another thing is, like, if you're now a nun, if you were a nun and you made a vow if you lived in an orphanage, right? So we have the children card. We also have the codependency card. It could not only have to be addiction problems, um, and the addiction doesn't have to be drugs. It doesn't have to be, like, drugs. You know, when you hear addictions, it kind of think of that it can be about negative thoughts it can be about um beliefs like thoughts that you have over and over again but also when you have food and hunger here it could be a dependency on food now the way that the food and hunger kind of can go is with the communal living and that is because also when you're in a communal living you don't know if you're definitely going to be getting food so you either don't eat a lot of food, um, which can cause disorders. You don't eat a lot of food because you need enough for everybody, or you eat too much because you're scared that there's not gonna be enough for next time, so you take larger portions, okay? So that has to do with that. Okay, I didn't know what this meant, and then when I fucked everything up, it kind of pissed me off. So we have farm here. I'm gonna go back to the biblical stuff. We have farm here. Um, you could be very, um, uh, sensitive about animals, you know, like, even with communal, communal living, like, you had to sometimes, you know, kill animals in order to do that. You could also have, like, a really big thing with nature, um, gardening, um, cooking, like, certain things, like, that you would cook if somebody was labeled as a green thumb type of thing. Um, also, usually when you're living in a farm, you know, you have a big family like you're all live all working together to get that to all work right so that could also have something to do with 
and we have the family with the wedding and children. But on top of that, we have over here healing family issues. So something could have happened where, you know, you were not in a, a love relationship and it was a family one where you either feel like, you know, if you had a trauma in um, the farm lifetime or whatever and somebody wants kids and you're like, no, I, I like you don't want kids. It could be because you had too many people in that living space or it could have to do with the communal living um, and being scared of being able to provide and you know everything like that with finances and we also have finances and career so obviously um the religious factors again with the vows all that um the vows also could come from the wedding and it could have been ending up in a requ unrequited love it could have ended up in um you know the cheating or um not feeling the same emotions and love as you gave out and you didn't get it back um it could have been being abandoned um like i said just getting up and leaving or um always moving around it could also be because you left they didn't want you to and you went out to a war in battle or you went out to do something that ended you up in jail and it also could have had something that actually entrapped you in your mind like you were in a prison in your mind which you know could have caused that because you wouldn't do the heart to heart conversation because you stayed in solitude in your head and wouldn't do the the conversation which also could have led to codependency and um addiction that something could have happened to your health and the unrequited love could have came from some kind of um incident from that that became a trauma thing Okay, so we're going to move down here. Sp the, when it says spirituality and religion, it could also have something to do the, with the vows. It could also have to do with the monk or the nun. It could also have to do with the biblical times. It is saying that you were in the biblical times. So if something is said about God or, I mean, of Jesus, or if something is in the Bible and if you feel iffy about it, it's because you were there. You know what I mean? Like, you were there. So you know that that, that story is not all the way true or, you know, something like that. So you can be iffy about when people are talking about the biblical times. Also, if you saw the crucifix crucifixion, crucifying crucifixion wow <laughs> if you saw the crucifying of jesus um seeing those necklaces or you know the crosses could be very sensitive could be very sensitive to see okay that's another thing ask your angels about again i just want to like go over phobias it's fear-based um it could be you know the claustrophobia of um being in prison it could be the like it can be anything fear-based anything like any phobias you have there you go um and it again can be affecting the letting go of control and um trust and trust can go from you know the promise being broken with the unrequited love um, again, it does not have to be a love life relationship, but because it's here and it says your commitment is being tested, it kind of seems like it is, but I don't know. Um, also, what was the one that was not speaking out? Oh yeah, the monk or the nun, or see now we have this, okay. This is a big one that I know a lot of people are probably going to resonate. Persecution and Inquisition witch of some kind um you know you were persecuted like the whole like dying and being blamed for things that you didn't do you were actually a really good-hearted person and you were the kind of, you were the um a witch who was making medicine for people and doing healing um rather than you know doing curses and being told also that you were killing crops and stuff like that it was all your fault because um, you did all that when you were actually just trying to help people and heal them, okay? The big thing that I say about this is because if you're being blamed for shit that you didn't do, that's going to be a huge trigger for you. And that's a huge trigger for me and Dawson. Literally, when we either know that we're right, like legit right, like we cannot be told that we're wrong. Huge trigger for us. If 
um, we're being blamed for something that we definitely did not do, huge trigger for us. Huge. So we've had a lot of witch, uh, you know, stuff. Um, if you also feel like uh, people are coming at you all the time and they're not, um, that could be another thing too. Um, so why I said that is because when you come to spirituality and religion with the um, religious factors where it says you could be um, in a different upbringing than the way you look at spirituality. So it's like you have to pretend that, you know, if you're growing up and your parents follow Catholic kind of um, um, religion and you just don't resonate with that, you know, even if you were in Egypt, because Egypt has a lot of spirituality stuff, you know, the mummies and astrology and, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like if your parents think of one thing and they're very strict about it, but you just don't go with it, that could be, um, something, you know what I mean? Um, again, religion is religion. It could have to go with vows. It could go with monk or nun. It could go with biblical times. It could go with angels. Okay. So that's a big thing over on that side. It, huge, huge religious factors in the relationship. Um, it could also have to do with your family not agreeing with you being with this person because of their religious factors or because of addiction or because of whatever, you know, you have the wedding and the children over here. So I think the promise also was a commitment or there was a commitment in sight and it wasn't completed. Um, which is, it can go from person to person. One person could have fucked it up and then the other person could have fucked it up. That You know what I mean? And also, when you have karma, it also can go from one to the other. So if you killed somebody in one lifetime, your next lifetime, you're most likely going to be killed, tortured, um, treated like shit. You know what I mean? But the thing is, is for you to learn the karmic lesson is you need to... Again, this is with, like, almost everything. You have to love yourself first, right? So it's like, you don't have to stay in that karmic whatever. Like, my thing is probably going to go off and it's going to be a part two, as usual. I hate that. Um, you always have to love yourself. So if you're having a shitty life, <laughs> it can be for a lot of karmic reasons, but you're the one that is in control of your life. You know, let go of control issues of other people and control yourself. Give your, yourself love. But a lot of, um, another thing I wanted to say, the attraction, the chemistry, um, what was the other one? The passion could have led to a such situation, uh, separation as well, which could have been because of the unrequited love. Now, what I want to say, and, you know, finding the utopia can also feel really weird in this kind of, lifetime because we don't have like solar like we do now but like in a different way you know what I mean um yeah so see like even even this forgiving and learning is what I just said like you would have a shitty life now and there's a reason there's to learn from it learn your mistakes learn you know whatever um Oh, yeah, I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure I did. But the female-male thing has a lot to do with the health because, again, you can have mental health and being confused. Um, you can actually create health problems. Um, I forgot what it was, and it, it actually has that. I don't know. Um, what was I talking about? Wars and battles, yeah, you could have... Um, a, a belief that there's injustice um, for wars and battles, um, unjustified, whatever. Uh, obviously, obviously, in all of these, you could have been killed in some way, either by an accident, a health problem, a person, you know, any way. So those are always something that can affect any lifetime. If you have not healed these things from past lifetimes they're gonna keep going over from lifetime to lifetime as a karmic lesson until you learn that lesson because we choose again this is what i believe we have a birth chart before we come in here 
we make up our karmic lessons that we want to like learn in this time with relationships, situations, everything. We plan it out. So if you're off your path, and usually you know you're off your path because if you're not happy, you're off your path. You're not doing your purpose. So it's kind of like you need, you can't blame anybody because you signed up for it. You also can't blame anybody because it's like if you stay in a relationship for a wicked long time and you're being treated like shit, you obviously don't love yourself enough in order to be able to be like, okay, I'm out. But you don't have to love yourself. You do. But whatever. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. But it's like if you stay in that relationship and you keep being treated like shit, like, yeah, obviously that person is a piece of shit and it sucks that that happened to you, but why aren't you leaving? You can't blame anybody. You have to take responsibility for your own self, right? So there's if there's no trust, other people are going to be being blamed for, right? Which is another type of unrequited love. What is this? Right, so the unrequited love, it says there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. There could have been a promise. There could have been somebody that just got up and left, you know what I mean? Um, Because you could have had that attraction and chemistry and passion. Oh, that's where I was going. And you separated too quickly. Or maybe you were with each other for a long time and it just ended up getting to a point where there wasn't any of that anymore um we could have also been talking you guys used to have the utopia thing and because of this lifetime it wasn't your utopia so you know and you could also have a lot of um trauma around the atlantis time too because it just like disappeared like it just like disintegrated like it just you know you know the story about atlantis like they could just like died (laughs) like for like have whatever but if there was no completion of that cycle or of that whatever then we're going to do it again um so there's an activation over here something happened that activated all of these things into this lifetime okay i want to also say again the fi- just in case the finances could be because of the community living or the biblical times, you know, whatever. Uh, if you needed to share, uh, this isn't here, but obviously if you were a Native American too, you were in a tribe. So that could be another thing with you're not used to give and take. You kind of just like give and if you don't get uh, get any take back or whatever, like, again, I don't quite a love. That's not here, but it could have something to do with it just... Because you have leaving your travel and I don't know. Something was activated in one of these relationships. Anything could have been. Um, and what I want to say is. <sighs> oh. We have great times too. And I have great times over there. Because you could have either been in Greece or Rome. And been in prison. Like you could have. Um, oh that Slavery. That could also have something to do with the farm, the communal. It could have to do with any of these things. Well, not any of them, but whatever. Um, It could also have to do with wars and battles because they have that, you know, they keep people sometimes. Um, So that could also have to do with food and hunger because if you were a slave or if you were in prison, you had a very limited amount and you were doing it for other people. So slave by... Also, that would come into with crops, with, you know, medicine woman and men obviously is also like you were a healer, you were using crystals, like this and that and the other thing. Um, What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Sometimes what happens is when you get into a relationship, it was too early for you guys to meet. So you have that separation, like you have that attraction and the chemistry and the passion Ooh, I'm not even doing it and the passion but then you end up separating okay because you're not supposed to meet yet <laughs> but it can happen because you attract each other if you're in that that living time like you are a certain way and the other person's a certain way you come together 
okay? And it's mostly your feelings, your thoughts, your state of um, where you are in your life, but it can come together. And a lot of the times that can do unrequited love and it can cause a separation, could have somebody just get up and leave, you know, I don't put out that, I'm not putting that out a lot just because obviously, you know, but, and then also bring in solitude, not talking about how, you know, whatever. And that also could be because of the monk and the nun and that because you're used to always you need to break the vows. So this also could be with soul contracts with people or beliefs. Um, okay. Like I was saying, if you were activated in a relationship and you weren't supposed to be yet, like it wasn't your time. Oh, that's what the timing thing was. I had a shitload of other cards like this kind, which I only have these because they're all, all, all of them. See, hold on. A contended and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. Okay. And we have trusts wherever. Um, memories from your history or childhood, issues, issues regarding children, romanticizing the past. We have that. And a very happy family life, financial security, finding magic in the little things in life. A celebration, a wedding, graduation, or a birth announcement. The need to have more fun. And then we have Archangel... Daniel, Daniel, or just Daniel, he's not an archangel. I am the angel of marriage and I am assisting you right now. Like those came out when I was shuffling, when I was adding those and then I fucked everything up so I put them back. But there was one that was saying like, um, you don't know m n enough about this situation. Um, like do more exploring and research or go back to studying, um, go back to school. And I didn't really understand those ones and the way it was coming together. I do now from you know, whatever, and it doesn't even really matter at this point. And, and the other one was, what I just freaking say? I don't know. You guys know what I said. But <laughs> Timing. It was about timing. So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it off here. There's a bunch of different things I just explained, you know. But there's the promise. And you're being commit, you're being tested. Your commitment's being tested because it wasn't finished. Like that karmic part and that karmic person, it's not finished. And once it is finished, once it's completed, once that activation is done, it turns into something different, something better. The um, the things that became the unrequited love start to activate you know the heart to heart conversations the communion like the all that stuff like all that you have healing family issues too like i said and you deserve love um all uh, release your ex unrequited love forgiving learning love yourself finances career religious factors heart to heart conversation codependency children wedding and then you have, like, the separation, the passion, attraction, chemistry. Um, but healing family issues, your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. For, you know what you have to forgive your parents for. And I really don't feel like going through this to do it. I'm just not going to. Um, but again, it could have to do with religious factors. And you, you know, being judged or something or feeling like you can't kind of like you can't come out of the closet you can't even sh share your spiritual gifts you hide behind I used to do it nobody knew I, knew I could do this shit nobody knew that I could talk to people that passed over nobody knew that about me because I wasn't telling anybody like who wants to know that like well not who wants to know that and I do healing and Reiki like nobody wants nobody I was scared to tell people that they think I'm crazy or something until I started doing it with people and then they were like oh okay like I believe you now <laughs> like you know what I mean? um and I, it took me so long to do that business well the business that I did I had all these ideas but I wasn't doing it because I didn't want to like come out of the closet you know come out of the the veil <laughs> um walk into all of it but yeah so it could have something to do with healing issues which relates to how your parents are now also 
if you had a good relationship with your parents, you could have had them come back into the picture in your past life. If you needed to take care of karmic reasons with your parents, that's another reason. The more you heal with the parents, the better, especially your father. I don't know why. Um, oh, if you were abandoned with unrequited love or anything like that, you also could have been an orphan or something like that. Um, and that could have had something to do with family issues. So, and forgiveness and learning. And knowing you deserve love. Letting go of trust issues and trust, because obviously you don't know what's going to happen next. So, you need to control it in order to be able to go and move forward. Even if it's something you really want. Anyways, so, I don't even really know what I was talking about. I'm going to end it here. <laughs> Because I explained so much anyways. Um, yeah, the male and female is interesting. If, like, you were always a male and now you're a female. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm so confused. You know. Um, but that promise, man. Something needs to be completed in order. And your commitment is being tested. If you, if you separate, like I said... You might have to release your ex in order for this to all come together if you have a situation like that. And like I said, it can also be thoughts. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. That's how everything is affected. Because if it's not released, then it's still affecting you. Um, like I said, the the witch kind of thing. If you're being blamed and you didn't do shit and you're actually a really good person... I can't, I can't with people when they blame me for something and I didn't do it. I know I, I fucking hate that. But anyways, on to the next. Um, especially when I'm a healer and never, I don't know what I was talking about before. But yeah, like if you meet up with somebody and you're not supposed to yet, you're going to separate. Something is going to happen. That is a karmic lesson for you. That is going to separate you guys until what you guys needed to learn before coming together is activated and completed in order for this unrequited love to not come. Okay? And if you don't come together when you're supposed to, when you're part of your birth chart, you're going to keep having problems. You're going to keep living the same thing over and over and over again until you complete that cycle. And it's going to keep coming. And it doesn't have to be with that person. It can come with somebody else. Another situation. Like if that person in your past cheated on you, you're going to think the next person's going to cheat on you. And then you could manifest it where they do cheat on you. <laughs> because you believe it so much that it's going to happen. It will happen. I promise you, it will happen. Or you'll feel cheated out of not giving and receiving. You know what I mean? Like, law of attraction, that's how it works. Um... If you don't feel worthy, you're going to have situations and people that are going to come into your life that are going to make you feel like shit. But those are the karmic lessons. You have to come, overcome those in order to move to the next thing and that to be gone. So your next lifetimes, you don't have to deal with it. But you're going to put yourself in more situations because life is about evolving. Life is about change. Life is about love. That's what we're here for, to not know shit be pushed out into the world that knows shit about anything about any of this and it's supposed to bring us back to love god source universe whatever people you know so it's like of course it's always about love you have all this biblical shit like i don't mean it like that sorry um but yeah so if if you've come to somebody and it was like a crazy connection and it ended really quickly it's because you guys weren't supposed to um come together yet so somebody's knocking at my door and i'm pretty much dead anyway so i'll see you guys later